Transactions are the most important part of any blockchain network. Essentially, every other part of a blockchain exists to ensure transactions happen successfully and securely on an ongoing basis. By now, I have mentioned transactions quite a bit. You still might be wondering what all goes into a transaction and what information they contain. This video is all about breaking down what a typical transaction looks like in the context of a blockchain. For the purposes of this video, I'll examine a Bitcoin transaction on blockchain.com. We can do that by visiting blockchain.com slash explorer, which allows you to explore helpful information about Bitcoin and Ethereum, including the latest blocks and transactions. Let's start by looking at the very first Bitcoin block, also known as the Genesis block. Like I've mentioned before, the beauty of the blockchain network is that you can look back all the way to the beginning of the blockchain and see the transactions and blocks. So here we see the very first block, block zero. And this block was created by Satoshi Nakamoto himself to introduce Bitcoin. In the message of this block, Nakamoto included the headline from New York Times that day, which was about the banks being on the brink of a second bailout. That is said to have been a statement about Bitcoin being introduced to solve the problem that exists with modern currency and centralized big banks. I'll walk through the pieces of this transaction one step at a time. So first up is the hash. The hash is the unique identifier for this particular block. This is a 256-bit hash that was generated based on all of the transactions in the block. Then there are confirmations. Confirmations are the successful act of hashing a transaction and adding it to the blockchain through mining. These indicate how many other times this block has been verified in this network. The timestamp then shows when this block was added after first being confirmed. The height is the number of blocks connected on the blockchain, which is currently zero. The next block in line would be block one, and the latest block would be that block number. The miner name is the name of the miner who confirmed this transaction in this block. As you can see, this miner is unknown. If I click on this link, however, I can see the profile which contains a public address that is derived from this user's unique public key. So there you can also see some other details about this user, like transactions that they have completed and how much they've sent and received and a balance. For Bitcoin, typically the miner name is shown in that of the mining pool. The number of transactions in this block is just one. As a reminder with Bitcoin, each block can have up to one megabyte of data or thousands of transactions. I also see that this particular transaction is 285 bytes. The difficulty of this first block was 1.0. So difficulty means how hard it is to find the current hash to the block. The difficulty started out at this baseline level, but has grown tremendously by many magnitudes over the years, and it's constantly adjusting to keep time to create the new blocks around 10 minutes. The Merkle root is described as the root node of a Merkle tree, which is the descendant of all the hashed pairs of the tree. So to put it another way, it represents the hash of all the hashes of all the transactions in the block. So since there is only one transaction here, the Merkle root that you see is also the same as the transaction hash, which we see down here. The block version refers to the number of related protocol proposals underway. The bits represent a subunit of Bitcoin where 1 million bits is equal to one Bitcoin. And the weight is some measurement to compare the transactions in relation to the size of the block limit. The knots is the random value that can be adjusted until the correct hash is found using proof of work. The transaction volume shows how many Bitcoin were included in this block. And for this block, it is zero. The block reward is the reward for the miner who calculated the hash for the block, and the initial reward was set to 50 Bitcoin, which today is worth about 500,000 US dollars. And finally, the fee reward is the transaction fees awarded to the miner, which was zero. At the bottom, if I look in the block transaction section, I can see the details of the transactions included in this block. First is the hash transaction. Again, in this block, here that is the same as the Merkle root. 
Then I can see that the input for this transaction is for newly generated coins from Coinbase and the output of this transaction, which shows the public address of the user and how much they receive. And then there is the fee, which takes the difference of the outputs and inputs and will be all the transaction fee the miner keeps. Notice here that there is one input to one output, but other transactions might possibly have many inputs and outputs. You'll also see that by looking at one block of transactions, there are references to past transactions too, going all the way back to this particular Genesis block. And creating this chain in reference to subsequent blocks makes double spending impossible. So this is what a typical block looks like. It has metadata describing the block and a list of transactions in it. Go ahead and take a look at some other blocks to familiarize yourself with how they are structured. To do that, head over to blockchain.com explore and explore away.